Lesson seven, the impact of obesity and its role in brain health. So lesson seven is an issue that's near and dear to my heart. As I firsthand experienced performing research studies measuring the impact of elevated weight on brain function. So why do I bring up weight when discussing brain health? Well, it's because we often think about the brain when it's too late. From the repetitive impacts arising from concussion-based sports now linked to a deadly chronic brain disease, to the increasing prevalence rate of Alzheimer's disease, which is exacerbated by habits so prevalent in our daily activities, such as harmful diet, excess alcohol consumption, and chronic sleep deprivation. We often think about these disorders once symptoms arise. However, the underlying neuropathology has been present for years, even decades, prior to symptomatic onset. Alzheimer's disease is expected to triple by 2050 with no cure on the horizon. It affects 50% of people 85 years of age and older, yet the neuropathology occurs in the brain decades prior to the onset of symptoms. If current trends continue, Alzheimer's disease is expected to double every 20 years in the future. While aging is the strongest risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, obesity is clearly a cofactor. So in this lesson, we'll review some statistics on obesity, along with the research that I have done, along with research from my colleagues, which demonstrate the risks that a poor diet leading to obesity can have on brain health. As a brain fitness coach, you will want to be armed with this knowledge, as it will be important to share with your clients. Obesity is a serious epidemic, both globally and nationally. From a global perspective, according to the World Health Organization, statistics show that 1.9 billion adults are overweight, with 600 million adults who are obese, and a shocking 41 million children under the age of 5 being overweight or obese. Alternatively, from a national perspective, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, obesity is referred to as a common, serious, and costly disease, with more than 36.5% of U.S. adults and 17% of U.S. children and adolescents managing obesity. The estimated annual medical cost in the U.S. in 2008 was $147 billion, with the annual medical cost per household with someone who is obese at close to $1,500 more per year than those who are normal weight. Furthermore, obesity is higher among middle-aged adults aged 40 to 59 than older adults or young adults. So obesity is a risk factor in over 30 different diseases, some of the most prevalent being cardiovascular disease, stroke, cancer, type 2 diabetes, depression, and dementia. There is a strong evidence base in the literature linking obesity to mental health issues and psychiatric comorbidities of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, anxiety, and depression. Anxious and depressive states are associated with a pro-inflammatory phenotype, which may result in obesity. At the time of this recording, in conducting a systematic search in the Library of Public Medicine database, there are over 10,000 peer-reviewed papers published in the domain of obesity and brain function. Further refinement of this search around the terms obesity and cognitive decline yield 634 publications. So normal human aging is accompanied by progressive brain tissue loss. One factor that influences brain aging is obesity, which has been demonstrated to be associated with detectable brain volume deficits. Obesity triggers systemic inflammation resulting in downstream effects, including chronic hyperglycemia, peripheral insulin resistance, oxidative stress, increased production of pro-inflammatory markers, and cerebral microvascular disease. Adipose tissue inflammation is an important factor in obesity that promotes insulin resistance and dysregulation of energy homeostasis. There's an increased risk of mild cognitive impairment with a body mass index in the overweight or obese range due to development of insulin resistance in the brain, which has been found in Alzheimer's disease. Obesity is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disorders, including hypertension and stroke, which increases the risk for cognitive decline in dementia. 
A neuroimaging study that investigates the effects of elevated body mass index on brain volume was performed by one of my colleagues in the Department of Pathology at the University of Pittsburgh, which was published in Human Brain Mapping in 2010. They used what is called tensor-based morphometry to measure white and gray matter volume changes in 94 healthy elderly subjects over the age of 70 who remained cognitively normal after five years. Those that were overweight as measured by body mass index had 4% atrophy of their brain tissue with their brains looking eight years older than their normal weight controls. And those that were obese had 8% atrophy of their brain tissue with their brains looking 16 years older than normal weight controls. Atrophy was observed in the frontal, temporal, and subcortical brain regions as illustrated in this figure. Those who had a body mass index over 30 in the obese range also had atrophy in the anterior cingulate gyrus, the hippocampus, and the thalamus. So the conclusion from this work is that obesity is associated with detectable brain volume deficits in cognitively normal elderly individuals. Our group was also interested in studying obesity as a modifiable risk factor in psychiatric and degenerative diseases. So back in 2011, we published a study in the Nature Journal Obesity investigating the effects of being overweight or obese on brain function. And as with the Pittsburgh study mentioned in the previous slide, we did it in a group of healthy adults ranging at age from 18 to 70. We compared brain spec images from healthy versus overweight adults as measured by body mass index. And using SPM analysis, we discovered that the overweight group showed significant hypoperfusion or low blood flow in the frontal lobes suggesting excess weight could impact behaviors associated with frontal lobe function, including executive function, impulse control, reasoning, and decision-making. This can be seen on the figure as noted in the areas that are yellow and orange. As noted in a previous lesson, I mentioned that we performed a clinical trial back in 2009 investigating the impact of playing professional football on long-term brain function. As this image clearly illustrates, we demonstrated significant impairments in blood flow to the brain when comparing our NFL group to group of healthy controls. And looking at the figure here, the areas in blue reveal those impairments, which you can see are located throughout the entire brain. As a follow-up to this work, and given our findings on the effects of obesity on the brain in a healthy population, we decided to investigate the effects of excess weight on brain function in our NFL population. Given that 48% of our players were obese, we knew that this would be a significant factor that would need to be addressed in the brain rehabilitation treatment protocol for our NFL group. In those players who are overweight, it was imperative to modify their eating habits in order to reduce inflammation and address symptoms associated with their post-concussion syndrome or traumatic brain injury. This was the rationale behind initiating an NFL weight loss group, which I successfully taught for two years. So in this study, we compared players who were normal weight to those who were overweight as measured by waist to height ratio. So we matched them by age and position and using SPM analysis discovered that overweight players not only had decreased perfusion in the frontal lobes as observed in our study in the healthy adults, but also demonstrated significant deficits in the temporal lobes, impacting their mood and memory. So this can be observed in the first image, which illustrates lower perfusion or blood flow in the frontal and temporal lobes, as indicated in blue. Interestingly, we observed a correlation between weight and perfusion in that perfusion deficits became more pronounced with an increasing waist to height ratio. This is illustrated on the graph seen here. On the y-axis, or vertical axis, you have cerebral blood flow, and on the x-axis, or the horizontal axis, you have the waist-to-height ratio. The red arrow, as seen on the brain images next to the y-axis, shows the areas that we are tracking. So as you move along the x-axis to the right, you will see the dots go down on the y-axis, denoting lower blood flow in that region. So taken together, this work serves as an important reminder that when working with your clients as a brain fitness coach, excess weight matters, 
even in professional athletes.